So you have this very strong support system that is entirely within the cult. You have no friends or family on the outside. So if you leave, you're alone. All that fake love and support is just gone. Redditors who broke free from a cult. What was it like? I was in a doomsday cult for 23 years from my age 13 to 36 1995 2018. Based on its knowledge, this world should have transformed by now into the so called heaven, and only a bunch of the cult followers should have remained in harmony. I totally believed everything I heard without questioning, probably because I was young and naive and followed their rules and regulations to the dot. Like celibacy, food habits, keeping a distance from everyone outside the cult even close family members, etc. Finally, when some obvious questions started arising in my mind I felt like fool and totally lost and betrayed. It took a lot to break free and I'm still in the process. I think the funniest thing about living in a cult isn't what you notice living in it. It's what you notice once you're out. There were some pretty strange things that when you're long removed from it all you're like. Holy speak that is messed up. When you're in it it just seems normal. That's the weirdest part. When you ask what it was like. My first response is to go. Like any other childhood really. And then I think about it and okay. Not quite. It's funny how accepting minds can be when it's all you know. Confusing and painful. I was born in a cult and left when I was 18. Because I could not bear to live like that anymore. They were very hard on women, reducing them to helps who were not allowed to voice opinions. Leaving was one of the hardest things I have done in my life. It took me years to realize the pain I caused my family was actually not my fault. Also, I felt so alien in the world. I miss the general background that people have, because the world I had lived in was so different. I was trying to fit in, without knowing how to set boundaries to protect myself. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button to support this channel. My mother was in what seemed like a cult. They called themselves Christians, but they wouldn't go to a regular church and held meetings in this old couple's apartment. The old couple were really strict and not nice people, but my mom adored them. She would say things like most people sin. But they are completely faithful and there are only a handful of people like that in the world. And she wanted to be like them someday. There were only a few families in attendance at these meetings. They believed the majority of the world was going to hell. And only 5% would truly be saved. They thought even churches were evil. And nobody could be trusted. Anyways. They made me wear a scarf on my head at all the meetings. Because I was beneath man I'm a woman was a child at the time, but men didn't have to wear a scarf, because they are above women but below God. If we as children didn't sit absolutely still we were evil. But when they sang hymns I had to play a tambourine and all the kids had instruments. But we got dirty looks, unless we played along perfectly. They followed me, and listened outside of the bathroom. They believed in prayer for healing, which is great, but they took it literally as in no doctors or hospitals. One of the families hit one of their sons by mistake with their car, and didn't take him to the hospital for a broken bone. My mom didn't get my brother and I treated for strep throat when we were little, up to the point my brother was hallucinating and still didn't. Eventually my dad had enough and told us we didn't have to go anymore he was never involved in the first place and I think my mom's car broke and my dad refused to buy her a new one. We visited one of the families at their farm house a few times after that with my dad and the woman's voice told me I was going to hell and one of them tried to push me into a frozen river. My mom and the group eventually lost touch. Good times. I broke from a cult. I had gotten sucked in during college. They prey on college kids who are away from home, searching for an identity and desperate for a sense of belonging. At first it was fun. Non-stop activities. People who genuinely wanted me around. Help. Support. It felt good. But it quickly took over. Then the pressure started. Subtle at first. Give up all other people and activities because they weren't good for me. Spend all my time and energy with the church. They assigned someone to watch me. To report to. 
to confess to. At the same time I befriended the cult leader's wife and spent a lot of time with her. I felt privileged. But I started to see things. I went to Catholic school 13 years and I think that was the best inoculation. Then the whole women's role thing really got me steamed. I started arguing with the cult leader's wife about women being equal and I suspect something I said got to her. Because the cult leader hauled me into a meeting and talked to me for an hour and by the end he could see I wasn't going to fall in line and I could finally see him for what he was, a fraud. So he kicked me out. I was banged hard. He was afraid I would infect others. My good friend had to flee in the dead of night and hide in another state. They hunted him. But me they never even spoke to me again. There are some common points to my experience there. I almost got roped into one during a tough period in my life as well. After getting kicked out by my really long time girlfriend, I was left homeless. Broke and all my friends abandoned me. I was alone. Betrayed and I really needed help. So this guy I barely knew offered to help me out. He drove me when I needed to pick up my stuff. Then offered me a loan which I refused. Then drove me to apartment viewings and laundered my clothes. Since my temporary housing had no washing machine. You can imagine how lost I would have been without that help. Then the induction was gradual. It started with him saying he's in a band and has to play for his friends and he's very nervous. He said it would help a lot if I showed up. After all he did for me, I told him of course I would. And I showed up and all his friends were super nice as well and caring and showered me with attention and love and took an interest if I was okay and invited me to all these fun outings, saying that I shouldn't be alone following my breakup. And it felt great. But slowly it turned to drifting me more and more towards their beliefs. I almost didn't resist it, because the outside world sort of sucks and people aren't nice. But beneath it all, I sort of felt all that love was undeserved. So I started disagreeing with them more and more and eventually ghosting them and cutting contact. Long long ago, when I was a preteen I had to stay with some relatives for a while. These relatives were in a church that was run by an openly admitted formerly imprisoned con man. I was told I had to go to this church too, three times a week, or be thrown out of the house with nowhere else to go. Things started off more or less normalized and only gradually did it become a fanatical cult. For the time I was there, I was as sucked in as everyone else, and couldn't see that things were messed up. One Wednesday evening I had a bad tummy flu, and was left with the neighbors, while everyone else went to the church. Friday night rolls around, and I'm still too sick and weak to go. Sunday morning comes, and I'm perfectly healthy, but no longer want to go. Once again I was left at the house, but with instructions to be gone before they returned. I left and have never regretted it. What made this church a cult? 1. I know of at least one young woman in the congregation that had quietly asked around for help because the leader was hitting on her and not taking no for an answer. She soon disappeared and was never heard from or mentioned again. I have no idea if something happened to her or she just ran, but either way it was bad. 2. At any given time in the last year I was there, at least three of the most attractive mid-teen girls lived with a leader, an unmarried man, with no supervision and their parents seemed to think this was wonderful. 3. The leader would frequently say one thing and then contradict himself in the next sentence, and no one ever noticed or commented on it. 4. The leader put a great deal of effort into separating his flock from friends, family and the community at large. All holidays became satanic and the congregation was forbidden to practice anything considered normal for holidays. 5. Years later when I was grown and married, a friend from childhood contacted me to tell me the cult was being investigated by, I don't remember now which alphabet agency. I immediately called the number for that agency that was in the phone book and told them everything I knew. I never heard anything after that and have no idea what happened. My Kawaka was born into and then escaped a cult. More details in a post here. I also share the story about his escape. I just texted him this question, and he replied to me with a list. So I will use a list format for my answer. The internet. How much information other than bible stories exist on the planet? 
while in the cult his only frame of reference of what life was like, was purely based on the Bible. Felt like he time traveled. Again. Only reference of life was the Bible. He thought he was live and in the same era the Bible was written. How many people there were. Only knew about 200 people his entire life he was never allowed to leave the wild community. He's not racist. But he didn't know that black people existed. There was only one person in the community that wasn't white. And they were half white half Asian. When he first met Epoch after escaping. He thought it was a skin condition. Again. He's not racist. At the time he just literally didn't know that Pock existed. The concept of an economy. In the community everything was provided. And you were assigned jobs to do. It was crazy to him how money worked. And represented value. Luxuries. In the community they only had the bare minimum. So they could be closer to God. The idea of a tempopedic mattress. Or a smartphone. Or a HDTV. Or even a donut with sprinkles on it blew his mind. How big highways are. He was aware that cars existed. But had not idea how many cars existed. Only about 200 people lived in the compound. And they only had one car. Only four of the top community leaders were permitted to leave slash drive. It was difficult. 25 years of not knowing how to think for yourself. And suddenly having to. Is hard to process. Everything was very routine and once I got out of that routine. I didn't know what to do. Force myself to meet new people and figure out what truth is. Very happy with who I'm now after 3 years, but still learning more about being independent and being open to new ideas and beliefs. Plus, holidays are amazing. I love Halloween and Christmas. Most cults separate people from anyone outside the cult. So you have this very strong support system that is entirely within the cult. You have no friends or family on the outside. So if you leave, you're alone. All that fake love and support is just gone. It's very traumatic. Most cults also dominate people's lives. Activities with the cult take up all their free time. So then they don't know what to do with themselves. Lots of suicides have been the result of people leaving a cult. I left AA in 2011. After 10 years of lies coercive deception, and being intimidated by extreme fear. Although many may laugh at AA being considered a cult, it has all 10 of the Samantana indicators that would describe it as such. As Scientology hides behind it being a religion, AA hides behind its structure of anonymity at all levels. I was pursued and threatened if I didn't go back, and other members visited my family, at home, and at their places of work, to tell them I was going to drink and soon die if I didn't resume meetings. As AA promotes the image of an altruistic fellowship the police are very wary of getting involved. It took me over 6 years to deprogram, and even today, I have troubling thoughts from the incidents I witnessed while a member. <coughs> Having to relearn basic words, definitions, and thought processes. Oh, practical prayer doesn't take up hours of your time. Circular logic is bullspeep. Idle hands are not the devil's playground. Being a passive-minded, obsessively clean, hard-working, frugal sheep that gives your blood, sweat, tears, time, and money all to the church doesn't make you a contributing member of society. I accepted a job as a traveling salesman once upon a time when I was desperate for income. Had no idea that it was a front for a cult. We sold waterbs. But any time someone would try to leave the company, management would gaslight you, become mentally abusive and manipulative, and try to use your personal life against you. All the other cowalkers were honestly like creepiest peep. They all behaved like subservient loyal robots literally. The cult itself was centered around the owner. They had subtle wording in their company core values and policies that basically referenced that they were a god, if not the god of humanity. It was weird as peep. I was subjected to some really speepty situations. And trying to tell my family and friends about it. They wouldn't believe me. Thought I was a lunatic. It was just a speepty job etc. But no. There were death threats. Other forms of threats. All sorts of just min blowing crap from management. Including attempted blackmailing. Framing etc. Company meetings consisted of people getting hazed. 
but they called it trust building exercises. There was also some kind of weird double love triangle going on between some of the cowalkers and management. I'm pretty sure the cowalkers all peeped each other too. Like you know the movie, what's it called? Westworld or something, where all the cyborg robot humans were obviously pre-programmed to act and behave a certain way without fault. That's exactly how my cowalkers were. In the end I realized I had to move across country without warning to get away from them.